yet prepared your will, please listen carefully. Without a will, the laws of the state and not you will determine who receives your property and in what amounts, who manages the affairs of your estate. Your choice as guardian of your minor children may never be known. Your loved ones could face unnecessary legal costs and needless court delays. Now, for only $9.95, you can make your own will, quickly and safely, with the American Will Kit. You'll receive simple, fill-in-the-blank will forms with easy-to-follow directions. The forms were prepared by lawyers to be valid in all 50 states. Order now, and you'll also receive free of charge our easy-reading personal protection guide, giving you important tips and special information that can save you money. Join the more than 1 million Americans who have already taken advantage of this special mail order opportunity. To order, call toll-free 1-800-821-2100. That's 1-800-821-2100. Only $9.95 plus shipping. Call now, 1-800-821-2100. Money back if not satisfied. Dr. Fred Swartz, my guest. Dr. Swartz says uh, people listen to you this afternoon, and you're talking about kids being taught there is no God, that we're just materialistic blobs, and much of the educational system is based on scientific manipulation of the young minds. Same thing that's going on in Russia. Now, just before I go to the phones, uh, ta uh, this is why we got two days. All right, take a couple minutes and uh, go a little bit more of why this doctrine is so attractive to these young idealistic people. Well, uh, uh, try and put yourself in the position of a brilliant young student in a college or a university, uh, and he wants a goal in life. Now, uh, there are many goals. You can have just the goal for making money, uh, but he's been brought up in a family with pl plenty of money, mostly, because that's the strange thing about communist recruitment. It recruits the well-to-do, not the poor. Practically every major world communist leader came from a relatively well-to-do family and was sure. recruited during his student years. Yeah. And so money doesn't attract him so much. And uh, uh, then he can't find it in religious faith because there is no God. He's been taught in school that there is no God, that man is merely a material being, that all our qualities are derived from the economic environment. And then somebody presents to him a vision, usually another teacher, uh, a vision of joining a special group, an elite group uh, that we as... Joseph Stalin expressed that in the death of Lenin, we communists are made from a special mold. We are made from a special stuff. We are those who form the army of the great international proletarian strategist, wow. the army of Comrade Lenin. And they said, come and join us and you'll be one of those who will uh, lead to the regeneration of all mankind, the creators of the world of tomorrow. And he catches a, a vision, and he finds in it a religious refuge for his godless and unbelieving heart. Wow. Let's go to the phones. I know a lot of people would like to talk to Dr. Swartz. 1-800-351-1212. South Shore, Massachusetts. Hi, Ron. Hi, Eric. I'm Ron. I just received a copy of the President's United States Soviet Exchange Initiative. And for the first time in my life, I feel a chill in my bones for yeah. what's coming down for this country. Yeah. Now... I hear school teachers and radio talk show hosts all over this state saying there's nothing wrong with communism. You got it. But go ahead. No, I, I just commented. That's that's right. Go ahead. The people in this country are untutored and thereby uninitiated to do anything about this. And I only see two recourses now. Number one, your book and this gentleman's book and the books like The Unseen Hand, these, these books have got to be distributed free to the people of this country because they're not going to buy them. That's the only way that you're going to stop this thing. And the last way you're going to stop it is what happened with the boys in the Alamo we had to do uh, 200 years ago, because this thing is really out of hand now. Ron, I wish uh, I wish we had the money to to distribute a few million of these books, but you know, unfortunately, we don't. But I do agree with you. Uh, I think it ought to be required reading in every school in the United States. Yeah, but the way the, way the school books are being uh, right. set up, there's no chance it's going to happen. See, but the big problem too is. Even if you distribute them freely to everyone, you've got to then persuade them to read to it. To read it, that's right. That's it. That, that's the catch. You see, you can 
uh, lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, and you can give a person a piece of literature, but it's hard to make them read it. Tanya in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi. Hi. Hello, Marlon. Hi there. I'm a first-time caller. Thank you. Um, I'm a senior in high school and uh, would like to know what is the best possible career or education you can get for the way the world is turning now in the future. I mean, is it best to get to go to college and get an education and what what is the best thing that uh, or career you could get into to to help uh, not only your own country but you know in case it does go communist you know uh, to survive and everything. Good question, Dr. Schwartz. Well, I always find it very difficult to give advice to an individual on such a broad question as this. Uh, you can lay down general principles, but uh, uh, see uh, the young lady. Uh, I can understand the age at which she is, but I don't know a family life, I don't know a background, I don't know a personality, I don't know a disposition, and uh, uh, her academic qualities, whether uh, she tends to be artistic or whether she tends to be more on the intellectual, cognitive side, and all these questions have to be considered. But what I would say is, uh, uh, I'm a Christian and I believe that there is a God who will guide us and uh, to seek God's guidance, say you're willing to do it, and then investigate. In general, I would say uh, I'd advise you to go to college and study as much as you can and equip yourself, and uh, but at the same time uh, keep humility and faith in God and uh, the pathway you should travel will open up for you. Dr. Schwartz, uh, Tanya represents a lot of young people listening today, and they have to be equipped uh, if they're going to go to a state college because they're going to have some socialist teachers, most of them secular humanists, and some of them Marxist-Leninists. So in order to get the education that would combat that, they're going to have to do it on their own. Largely, and in terms of the reading of the books and getting the material and then form themselves into little study groups mm -hmm. and uh, work together uh, because uh, the uh, penetration of the educational system by the ideas which are basic to Marxism is almost universal today and it applies not only in the state schools but in a lot of religious schools as well. Agreed. Thank you, Tanya. Bye-bye. Grand Prairie, Texas. Hello, John. Yeah, I was wondering if you can, Marlon, if you can have your guest comment on whether he believes uh, Mehmed Ali Aja, you know, the man who tried to kill uh, the Pope, was a communist agent? Do you know anything about it, Dr. Swartz? Well, uh, my knowledge of it is just the knowledge that uh, has come out uh, in the press, and uh, uh, I always try and follow the principle that uh, when I make a controversial statement, I'm always prepared to give the evidence for it, and nobody should believe it just because I say it. Uh, it's only if I provide evidence that is objective, factual, irrefutable, and irrefutable. Now, the, uh, there was a great deal of evidence that uh, the uh, as attempted assassin uh, had been associated with the, the Bulgarian uh, communist secret police, uh, financed by them and through them, and uh, that that thesis was presented, but uh, it was not proven in a court of law, and uh, so I can't dogmatically say whether it's true or false, but I would say it is quite... Uh, Possible because there was a motive for killing the Pope. Uh, the events that were taking place in Poland, the Soviet Union was threatened with a Polish revolt that they might have to put down by armed force, which uh, they didn't want to do because it would interfere with their program for world conquest, which we may talk about later. Mm -hmm. And so the Pope was a menace in that way. And uh, uh, so... Uh, I would say it is possible. My guest this afternoon is Dr. Fred Swartz. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I went back uh, just within the last few weeks and have reread his book entitled You Can Trust the Communists to Be Communists. 
And ladies and gentlemen, it is the best. It is, uh, it, it's a paperback book of close to 200 pages. It's easy to understand. If you'll read this book twice or three times, you'll come away with a good knowledge of what communism is all about. And I, I want, the gentleman suggested a few minutes ago, let's give them away free. I think if, if you pay a little something for it and have an investment in it, you're going to read it. So what we have done, we've, uh, Dr. Swartz is giving us a special discount on the book, and uh, we're bringing it right down to our cost. I'm going to include his pamphlet entitled, Why Communism Kills, The Legacy of Karl Marx. And the cost on all of this uh, is $3.50. Now, don't tell me that you can't afford that. If we can afford to get it to you like that, at least you can afford to take a couple minutes and write me a letter and send the $3.50 and say, Marlon, send me the book on communism by Dr. Fred Swartz. Just to Box 30, Dallas, Texas, and the zip is 75221. It's the kind of book that I wish the leaders of our country would read because they are being fooled wholesale by this guy, Mikhail Gorbachev, who is a die-hard, hardcore, doctrinaire, Marxist-Leninist. And so is the little dictator down in Nicaragua, little uh, Joey, whatever his face is. What's his name? What? I forgot his name even. He kind of reminds me of Charlie Chaplin. But uh, they're hardcore, dyed-in-the-wool uh, Marxist-Leninists. And they'll kill you in the bat of an eye because it's going to advance communism. Please write to me. It is the Point of View Book of the Month. And uh, incidentally, if you'd like the tape of today's program and tomorrow's program, enclose $10 for those. We'll get those to you. Write to Marlon Maddox, P.O. Box 30. That's Post Office Box 30, Dallas, Texas, and the zip is 75221. We'll be back for another 30 minutes. Tomorrow we're going to talk about di dialectical materialism with Dr. Swartz. Very interesting. You're listening to Point of View. This is the USA Radio Network. It's time for the Mike Richards Report, brought to you today by Americans for an Informed Public. Now here's Mike. Folks, if foreign investors want to buy office buildings, hotels, or raw land here in the U.S., why shouldn't they be allowed to? They'll have to obey the same laws that American companies have to, and since they're coming here to compete in our markets, they'll have to work under the same regulations, environmental and antitrust laws, and other things that American companies have to. Plus, since many American companies have enormous investments overseas, if we put restrictions that limit investments here, it'll make it difficult for us to argue the case for more open investment policies in those countries. Folks, foreign investors are looking at the United States because we have a strong economy, because we have a stable government, and because because they feel our investment opportunities are better than they may have in their own country. All that speaks well for us. Think about it. Till next time, this is Mike Richards. For a copy of this month's Mike Richards Report, send $2 to Box 1529, Sugarland, Texas, 77487. <laughs> are listening to Point of View Radio Talk Show, broadcasting to the nation via satellite from Dallas, Texas. For cassette tapes of interviews and other materials offered on Point of View, please write to Marlon Maddox, Post Office Box 30. That's Box 30, Dallas, Texas, 75221. Zip 75221. Please enclose your tax-deductible gift when you write. The opinions expressed on Point of View do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station. Now, here again is Marlon. My guest this afternoon, Dr. Fred Swartz. A few weeks ago, I was on an airplane flying to California, and across the aisle from where I was sitting was a young lady reading Mikhail Gorbachev's book, Perestroika. And it just happened that I was working on the manuscript of my booklet, and the one that I've written entitled The Selling of Gorbachev. And uh, we struck up a conversation, and I handed her the manuscript, and Mary handed it to her, and I said, tell her 
just to read the first seven pages. Well, she began to read, and uh, she didn't give me the manuscript back until we got in Los Angeles, and she had read a great deal of it. And she said, that's a very interesting theory. And uh, we talked about Gorbachev. I asked her, was she a teacher? She said, no. Well, in a sense, she was. She was, she was a teacher to bring about a better world. A Marxist is basically what she's saying she was. And I said, well, you know, I hope you understand communism and so on. And I brought up the word dialectics. And she said, say what? I said, dialectics. It's a part of the doctrine of communism. And I had just been reading Dr. Swartz's book, You Can Trust the Communists, so I sounded very intelligent in giving some of the words that he had written. She didn't know what he's talking about. In the March 15, 88 issue of Dr. Swartz's news magazine, here's what he says. He says, near the beginning of his book, Perestroika, which contains the message which he wishes to convey to the American people, Mikhail Gorbachev stresses that his program is dialectical. Then he quotes, quote, The works of Lenin and his ideals of socialism remain for us an inexhaustible source of dialectical creative thought, theoretical wealth, and political sagacity. The Leninist period is indeed very important. It is instructive in that it proved the strength of Marxist-Leninist dialectics. And Dr. Swartz says, Gorbachev's well aware that most of the people in the United States wouldn't have the foggiest idea what that word meant. He says most of them do not know whether the dialectic is animal, mineral, or vegetable, and more tragically, they don't care. Then he says, unfortunately, many of these leaders have the responsibility of formulating policies and programs to combat Soviet subversion and expansion. You're talking about ignoramuses trying to form policy for the United States. We're not going to get into it today, Dr. Swartz, but tomorrow the general subject is dialectics. Is it important to know what this is? Well, I uh, hope that you won't consider me too proud if I say that Time magazine once wrote, this is about 20 years ago, that I was the only person they knew who could make communist dialectics understandable yeah. to the ordinary person. Yeah. And uh, the official philosophy of communism is called dialectical materialism, mm -hmm. which is often just referred to as dialectics. And I say that th those people are interested in the economics and military policy of communism, but not interested in its philosophy, like dairy farmers who are interested in milk, but not in cows. They're like orchardists who are interested in fruit, but not in trees, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. because... They pay no attention to the basic beliefs which underlie and direct and motivate the whole uh, panorama of programs which the communists present. And as Joseph Stalin said, dialectics is the soul of Marxism, and uh, I'm looking forward to answering questions about it tomorrow and trying to tell you not only what it is, but how it is applied and how it is a very potent communist weapon. I think uh, your explanation in your book as well as in your talks for the last 25 or more years is probably one of the greatest gifts that an Australian could bring to the United States. So hopefully we can shed some light on it tomorrow. Uh, the foreign... Uh, the Foreign Minister of Australia, like that's the equivalent of your Secretary of State, once said to me that uh, for the first time in his life he'd found out something about the significance of dialectical materialism. It's going to be interesting, folks. Don't miss it. 1-800-351-1212. Now, that's tomorrow. Dr. Schwartz is going to be with me on the program tomorrow. Let's go back to the phones. Uh, Wayne up in St. Louis. Hi, Wayne. Hi, this is uh, my first call. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, Dr. Schwartz and Barbara. Hello, Wayne. Uh, it's very important that your information get out to the public. Uh, the media is not letting it out, and we cannot vote the right way being blinded by the media. We vote wrong on Nicaragua and South Africa and every place else without your information. Marlon, I'd ask, like to ask you a big favor. Would you lead us listeners and voters and, and put, uh, help us all to put pressure on our Congress to have a media investigation? The, the journalism schools, the ownership of the media, 
is 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 holding back this information from us and when they have the investigation they should call it a media gate and if we can get that <laughs> media I our like congress it. has a, a a responsibility to give us a free press and our press is not free in giving us this information and they are responsible for our national security and we're going to go down the drain without this information would you lead us in in having pressure on all of our congress to give us a media investigation well you know it's kind of like dr swartz said a moment ago about making people read his book you can lead the horse to water but you can't make him drink and i write books and i do five days a week on it wayne and uh, we're educating a lot of people across the country, but it's not going to happen overnight. But I, I still have hope that we can turn it around. But it's a good suggestion, and I thank you. And you hang in there. You've had my some comments. speakers from Accuracy and Media on your program, haven't yeah. you, yes. Marlon? Yes. Because Accuracy and Media is an organization which is directed towards uh, accurate and responsible reporting in the press, and my friend Reed Irvine leads it, and uh, it's an organization that's well worth support. I thought you'd had a speaker from it on your program last year. Yes, we've had several, in fact. Yes. You know, he mentioned something that uh, not only our news media, but uh, our leaders in Congress uh, leading us astray. Uh, let me ask you something. I'm going to use names and be pointed. Uh, Congressman Jim Wright, House Speaker and Congressman Quaylo, uh, Christopher Dodd, these men who cozy up to the communists in Nicaragua, do they understand what's in your book? Well, uh, uh, I, uh, one of my favorite maxis, maxims is known as Hanlon's Razor, and it says razor, that means like a proverb, a uh, sharp maxim. It says, never blame on malice that which can be fully explained by stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> and some people think you got that it. they're part of a vast yeah. conspiracy, malicious conspiracy to destroy America. That's right. I think they're only ignorant and stupid. You know, I think you're absolutely right. And I think a lot of guys, I'm not saying these particular ones, but a lot of people are very sincere, just stupid. That's right. You see, if they don't know, uh, a friend of mine... <clears throat> uh, talks about how when he was a student at Moody uh, Bible Institute, he was called Little Castro yeah. because he was such a fervent supporter of Fidel Castro. Right. And they say to him, but how, uh, you weren't a Christian then. Oh, he said, of course I was a Christian. Yeah. He said, well, how come you as a Christian were supporting the atheist Fidel Castro, atheistic communist? He said, I didn't know he was an atheist and a communist. <laughs> <laughs> and Christians can be ignorant as well as anyone else. It's incredible. The Bible says, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. And uh, no man's judgment's any better than his information. If we don't understand, we can be deceived. I'll tell you what, folks, the statement he just made about uh, ignorance is worth the whole program. <laughs> We're going to take two minutes out. We'll talk some more to Dr. Fred Swartz. Now you know why I'm having him back tomorrow. It's just too much information to cover. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Every two seconds, a child dies of starvation and preventable diseases in war-torn, impoverished areas of our world. Does Jesus care? More importantly, does he want you to care? Remember his words? I was hungry, you fed me. Naked, you clothed me. Sick, you cared for me. For as much as you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. When you care enough to get involved and sponsor a child through World Vision, you not only minister to a needy little life, but you give a gift of love to Jesus himself. Call 1-800-4-HUNGER. Your pledge of 65 cents a day, $20 a month, will sponsor a child and provide things like food, clothing, medicine, and the hope of Jesus. You'll receive your child's picture, biography, and you can even write to each other. Give a gift of love to Jesus this season and to those he cares for. Call 1-800-4-HUNGER. In a recent survey conducted at Johns Hopkins University, over 29,000 weight loss methods were studied. Fewer than 6% were found to be effective or even safe. The 80-20 medical weight loss plan is different. 
Developed over a three-year period by a leading physician and clinical dietitian, the 80-20 plan is for people who don't have time to play diet games. Brought to you privately on convenient audio cassette tape format, this uniquely successful, life-changing weight control plan is a step-by-step -step guide to weight loss without hunger, fatigue, or emotional highs or lows. No pills, no powders, no hypnosis, no meetings, no embarrassing public weigh-ins. The 80-20 plan is a breakthrough solution to a difficult, painful, sometimes lifelong problem. To learn more about the 8020 plan, call now 1 800 55 TAPES. 1 800 55 T A P E S. Again, 1 800 55 TAPES. Dr. Walter Judd, uh, who lived in China, uh, saw communism firsthand, wrote these words. He said, I've not found a more profound student and interpreter of communism in our Western world than Dr. Fred Swartz, no more lucid explainer of what communists advocate and do, what they as communists must do, and why. Dr. Swartz understands that it is what communists believe that requires their gaining control of the world, which in turn requires the killing of those who have been miscreated by their capitalist environment and those who in their ignorance or error stubbornly resist. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've never done this before. It's, I, I'm calling it the point of view book of the month. And uh, I'm going to talk about it all through the month of April. And the title of the book is You Can Trust the Communist to Be a Communist. It is a deep book. It is easy to read. And you'll be educated concerning what communism is and you'll have a line on Mikhail Gorbachev that you'll pray to God President Reagan would have. And some of the other people up there in Washington, D.C. And we're sending a pamphlet, uh, Why Communism Kills, and also the paperback book, You Can Trust the Communists to Be Communists. It absolutely our cost to get it out to you. Just write to me and enclose a gift of $3.50. That's the cost of the book and the postage and the handling. And I'd like to send 30 or 40,000 out and uh, help educate the American people. 1 800 351 1212. Dr. Schwartz, uh, before we go back to the phone, you do have a newsletter. Tell the people how they can get it. Well, uh, I publish a newsletter twice each month. Uh, the, uh, it contains accurate, up to date information concerning communist doctrines programs, organizations, methods, uh, objectives, uh, and the information I get is through constant research into the many communist periodicals mm -hmm. that are put out. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll be able to afford it because the subscription price is a willingness to read it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll gladly send it to anyone who will read it. If you drop Marvin a line or drop me a line, uh, and ask uh, just for the newsletter of the Christian Anti-Communism Crusade, just put Box 890, Long Beach, California. I'll repeat that. Box 890, Long Beach, California, 90801. And just say newsletter, and we'll gladly send it to you. And uh, when you write to me for a copy of his book, if you'd like to get his newsletter, say so, and... Dr. Swartz, we'll send that name along to you. We will, too. We uh, uh, send that the subscription price is willingness to read it. 1-800-351-1212 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Hi, Karen. How are you doing? We certainly Fine. appreciate your total network, Marlon. Well, thank you. I have a question, and you stole part of it before the break <laughs> there. Okay. Concerning the ignorance of our senators and congressmen, a uh, couple of us here just wondering, do they really know what's going on? And if they do, is someone being paid off, possibly benefiting personally by hiding this information? Or is there any possibility of the president having some kind of higher strategy and by signing the treaty making some kind of trade-off? All right, uh, Dr. Schwartz, what do you think? Is it Well, first of all, I obviously can't. Uh, I have no sources of secret information, so I can't 
talk about anybody being paid off or any conspiracy, and frankly, I always like to believe the best. I don't think that that is necessary, and I don't think it's taking place. But put yourself in the position of a congressman. Your great motivation is to remain in Congress uh, for a number of years anyway, and to uh, uh, continue in office. Uh, uh, your whole life and family and everything is wrapped around that. Well, now uh, you have a hundred issues clamoring for your attention, and the ones to which you give attention are those which are associated with votes that will keep you in office. And so the politicians are influenced by the issues that are important to many people in their constituency, and since they, uh, from the information they get, the majority of people are not too concerned about the communist threat and the communist danger, they don't give too much attention to it, and I hesitate to say it, but when it comes to theoretical doctrinal points, they simply don't know, and what's worse in many cases, they don't care. But Dr. Of course, Swart there are some who are actively pro-communist. For example, uh, Congressman Ronald Dellums of California gets more favorable publicity in the communist press than Gus Hall, the secretary of the Communist Party. Mm. Uh, Dr. Dr. Swartz, I that... Uh, statistics, but I read it all the time. That's the impression I get. That, but it still doesn't, uh, even with that, it still does not excuse... The fact that if a man is going to serve this country, he's going to vote on whether or not to defend the country, to send aid to anti-communists in Nicaragua, Angola, Mozambique, other parts of the world, uh, sign uh, treaties uh, with the communists. The minister who went down to see uh, Ortega came back and told him that Ortega doesn't present any danger to the United States. And uh, he just works on that, and he believes that. That's got to be willful ignorance. Well, uh, if it's willful ignorance, it's a willful ignorance that dominates uh, many, if not most, of the major organizational bodies of the mainline churches. Wow. Thank you, dear. St. Louis. Hi, Sandy. How are you doing, Marlon? Hi, Dr. Schwartz. Uh, how are you? I'd like to speak to the man who called earlier, and then I have a two-fold question, one for uh, Dr. Schwartz and one for Marlon. Sure. Um, the man that called earlier about the media, I think that he doesn't realize that the media is controlled by the socialist attitudes and influences. There's no question about that. Statistics prove that. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, and another thing is... Um, but not by the owners so much as by the journalists. That's right. Right, and also by their own attitudes, by their teaching and the things... Yeah, but, see, they do the, uh, uh, the number of uh, investigations, polls that have been taken of the journalists. They find that overwhelmingly they're in the unbelieving liberal uh, right. persuasion uh, and this expresses itself in their journalism in their reports right that's right dr. Schwartz lately I've heard a lot on this and similar subject matter okay it, it's very disconcerting and I know God doesn't want us to worry but what in the world can the average person do well uh, learn the truth and tell it I've got a tremendous respect for the power of truth. And when you can present the truth, it sometimes uh, has a long gestation period, but it brings forth a healthy baby, a healthy product. And uh, uh, my own experience, I've been trying to tell the truth about communism for 30 or 40 years, and I constantly get amazed at uh, some result, uh, even a dramatic result, of something I said 20 years ago about which I've known nothing. And uh, if we can learn and tell the truth, and as an individual begin to read, begin to study, gather a few folk together, and create a focus of truth and understanding, and it can spread like a prairie fire. Right. I, well, I agree with that. But I'm amazed at the ostrich uh, syndrome or attitude. People want to bury their head in the sand and then leave their tail up in the air for somebody to come along and kick it. You know, a lot of people don't want to hear this. Uh, I know, but we can only begin with ourselves 
and start uh, uh, getting the books, reading them, studying, uh, persuading those close to you to do the same, gathering a few people and work that way, uh, uh, because we have no control over what the majority of other people do. Real quick, you had another question, okay. Sandy. Okay, yeah, Marlon, uh, why don't you send... Um Reagan and a few very influential people, why don't you send them a copy of the book, of Dr. Swartz's book, and, and some of this information? Why don't you get it out to them? You probably could reach them. Um, we'll send some out. Maybe, every maybe, member yeah. of Congress gets every newsletter that we put out. So, okay, so they do, and, and chances are they've uh, maybe been mailed a copy of your book? Uh, I feel sure that uh, yeah. maybe not the new ones, but uh, yeah. over time, why, back in the years, in the 19... Uh, 60s, uh, Ronald Reagan, as he then was, uh, attended our seminars, and we've been uh, associated uh, that way. And it's not merely a matter of knowledge for politicians, it's the building of a public opinion which translates itself into votes and legislative action. I'm out of, I'm out of time. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Bye -bye. Sandy, for Bye -bye. calling. Let me suggest uh, you write to him and get a copy of the book and send it to your congressman or however many copies you might need. Again, before I go, uh, I, I simply made this book the point of view book of the month. I'll talk about it through the month of April. And uh, we'll send the book to you at our cost, which is about $3.50 to get it out to you. And so please write to me and ask for the book uh, on communism by Dr. Fred Swartz. The title of it is You Can Trust the Communists. We'll also enclose his pamphlet, Why Communism Kills. The address will be given by the announcer in just a moment, and Dr. Swartz is going to be back with me again tomorrow. You can understand why now that I've got to have him for two days. And the main subject is going to be dialectical materialism. And if you have an understanding of dialectical materialism, you'll be able to predict what Mikhail Gorbachev and the rest of the communists, whether it's Daniel Ortega or whoever it may be, what they're going to do next, because you can trust them to be communists. That's what Dr. Swartz is trying to tell us. So be sure and join me, join me tomorrow. Dr. Swartz will be back with me. Take a moment, ladies and gentlemen, and write to me and request a copy of the book. If you'd like the two tapes, they will be two tapes for $10. And close a generous offering if you can. It would be greatly appreciated. Here's your announcer now with the address. Jot it down. Let me hear from you right away. So long, everybody. You have been listening to Point of View Radio Talk Show via satellite from Dallas, Texas. Please address your letters to Marlon Maddox, Post Office Box 30. That's Box 30. Dallas, Texas, 75221. Zip 75221. Please enclose your tax-deductible gift when you write. Point of View is produced by International Christian Media.